Trees are fractal. Different parts of a tree often look very similar, even though they're at different scales. This branching point here is big, this branching point here is small, but they look more or less the same as each other. Fractal geometry is a kind of symmetry. Symmetric objects look the same as themselves after you rotate, or reflect, or slide. And with fractals, you can also scale things up or down. Well, okay, these branching points don't look exactly the same as each other when I scale them. Natural objects like trees are never perfectly symmetric. But what if you want perfect symmetry? Here's a 2D fractal tree designed by Robert Fathauer. He took photographs of a Palo Verde tree and digitally combined them with scaled copies. So this is, at least in principle, perfectly fractal. And if you've got a fractal that looks exactly the same at different scales, then you can make a video zooming into it that loops. With a natural tree, this wouldn't work so well. It wouldn't seamlessly fit together around the loop. So that's a zoom into a 2D fractal tree. And of course, I want to make a zoom into a 3D fractal tree. This is a follow-up video to a video I made about zooming into a 3D printed fractal surface. Go check out that video for some of the issues that came up in making looping zooms like this. For example, why I have to physically move the camera towards the fractal rather than using the zoom on the camera. But anyway, instead of zooming into this bumpy surface, this time I want to zoom into a tree. Well, here's the 3D printed tree that I came up with. Or maybe you'd say it's less of a tree and more like a cauliflower head or a sea anemone or a piece of coral. And we'll get to the zooming loop and why I've mounted it at this strange angle. But before that, uh, now let's see, how do people do this? Many, many commenters on my previous video had strong opinions about the fact that I wasn't pulling focus as I moved in. Well, here you go. This is a version of that zoom loop with control of the focus as the camera moves in. And while that's running, let me complain at you about how much of a pain it was to get working. My motion control equipment is controlled by a Python script. I need the focus to be controlled by the same script. The focus on older camera lenses can be controlled by a piece of motion control equipment that physically rotates the focus ring. But modern lenses focus with motors that are not mechanically linked to the ring. This is so they can autofocus more quickly. So I wouldn't be able to reliably reproduce a change in focus using motion control to physically rotate the focus ring. Instead, I can control the focus on my modern lenses electronically. Okay, great. But is there a Python API for this on my Panasonic Lumix camera? Of course there isn't. Instead, there's a proprietary remote control app that has buttons on screen that you can click to change the focus on the camera. I use the PyAuto GUI Python library to have my Python script literally click on the screen where the remote control buttons are. Does the remote control app tell you what your current focus is? Also no. So I had to figure out how many clicks I needed to get the focus from infinity to focusing on the print when the camera is far away, and how many more clicks get it to focus when the camera is near. And then what is the relationship between distance along the slider and how many clicks I need to do to be in focus? Well, I can tell you that it isn't linear. I'm not sure what it is, but I tried a quadratic relationship and that seemed to work well enough, so I, I called it a day. All right, now we've got that out of the way. There were some things I wanted to improve from the previous fractal zoom project. One of the issues was that the scaling factor is pretty large. It's a factor of three. This meant that I couldn't get that many levels of recursion in the print, only five levels. It also meant that the motion control slider had to be very close to the 3D print so that the camera could get three times closer as it moved along. With this tree design, the scaling factor is the square root of two, much smaller than three. So I could do many more levels of recursion. This has 15. It branches into two at each level, so there are two to the power of 15, which works out to 32,768 smallest branches. So the geometry of each branch in the tree has to be very simple. Here's what each branch looks like. It's got a hexagon on the bottom and two hexagons at the top, which are the square root of two smaller and are rotated upwards by 45 degrees from the base hexagon. The branch is just the convex hull of these three hexagons. So it's a very low poly shape, which again I need since I've got tens of thousands of them. By scaling down two copies of the branch and moving their bases to fit onto the hexagons at the top, we get a second level of the tree. Then we can repeat again and again and again, 15 times in total. And because of how we made it, if we take the whole tree and scale and rotate it in the same way as we did for the second level, it matches up with itself. This is more or less what has to happen in the fractal zoom, except that we don't physically scale the 3D print instead the camera moves closer. It wasn't so obvious what this rotation axis is. 
but the 3D printer has to rotate around it, so I had to work it out. The combined movement and scaling that takes the base hexagon to one of the top positions can be written as a 4x4 transformation matrix. I got the axis of rotation and the center of the scaling by looking at the eigenvectors of that matrix. I designed this screw mount on the inside of the 3D print in the direction of the rotation axis. This receives a bolt, which is mounted onto the motion control motor with this thing to stabilize it. It's actually a knurled knob I bought from McMaster Car, of course. With this setup, I don't have to worry about lining up the fractal with my rotating motion control motor like I did in the previous video. Or maybe it's better to say that I didn't worry about it this time. It could still be inaccurate, but I have too many other variables to keep track of in the setup, so it's great to be able to just get this fixed in the print. All right, let's see this fractal zoom then. Here's the zoom loop I got after much fiddling with the setup to try to remove errors. One thing that was harder with the tree than with the previous project was figuring out exactly where the camera should be looking. It has to look at the center of the scaling and rotation, which was easy to pinpoint on the bumpy surface that we had before, but it's harder to see here. I also couldn't separate out the rotation from the movement of the camera, like I could in the previous project. There's no way to get this tree to match up with itself by only moving the camera. I have to rotate the print as well. And here's what's really going on. Again, the camera is moving in at the same time as the print is rotating. And as in the previous project, the speed at which the camera moves is decreasing exponentially while the print is rotating at constant speed. I've got one more thing to show you, adding laser lights, of course. But first, thanks to JLC PCB for supplying this print. And well, you can see that any errors in the precision of their print are at least no worse than all of the other sources of error I had to deal with. No money changed hands, but they did send me the print for free. Even so, their prices are extremely reasonable in comparison to other 3D printing services I've used. They've just launched a new website focusing on 3D printing at jlc3dp.com, so check them out. All right, finally, lasers. Now I realize that I have a red laser level, a green laser level, and a tree. So given the time of year, this is not just a real life fractal tree zoom. This is a real life fractal Christmas tree zoom. So happy greetings, season's holidays, have a happy Christmas, and a merry new year. Thanks for watching.